Good morning. I'm Dr. Tavish Gupta and I'll be presenting the hammock, an innovative surgical approach for IOL dislocation. So whenever we are faced with the complications in cataract surgery, such as an anterior capsular extension or posterior capsular rent, a rigid PMMA lens in the ciliary circus has always been a viable option and it has been shown that the visual outcomes are on par with conventional foldable single piece IOLs. But a problem with these PMMA IOLs is of IOL dislocation, which has been shown to occur in 0.2 to 2% cases. And it can lead to various symptoms such as decreased visual acuity, diplopia, and varying dysphotopsias. Why, is, why does this occur? This occurs a lot of the times due to trauma, and it can also occur due to capsular phimosis, which causes shrinkage of the capsular bag. And it can also occur due to zonular weakening, which may be due to progressive conditions, or maybe due to intraoperative zonular damage. So the management options, if the patient is asymptomatic and the lens is stable, then we can do a refraction and prescribe glasses, uh, adopting a conservative approach. In cases in which the patient is symptomatic and the IOL is decentered, but there is adequate support from the zonules and the capsule, then we can just refixate and reposition the IOL. But if there is zonular dehiscence or there is inadequate capsular support, then we have to explant the PMMA IOL and in such cases we exchange it with a three-piece IOL which can be fixated into the sulcus or into the sclera. Now just merely repositioning the lens on the capsular remnants will lead to instability and it can cause further dislocation of the lens. So in case of multi-piece IOL, uh, this, stability can be count this instability can be countered by an optic capture or in some cases a reverse optic capture which provides anchorage. And in foldable IOLs also we can do a reverse capture. But in PMMA IOLs this becomes unfeasible due to the rigidity of the material. So we uh, have adopted the hammock technique in which we use the, in which we tuck in the inferior part of the optic beneath the capsular remnants. And then we use the haptics and we leverage the haptics as the strings of a hammock to provide stability and anchorage to the IOL. So this not only provides stability, but it also prevents against dislocation of the IOL the against the forces of gravity when the patient assumes an upright position. And another added advantage is that because the haptics are placed in front of the ciliary zonular plane, uh, it, uh, it helps in uh, creating an effect it helps in reducing the shifts in the effective lens position post-operatively and which helps in having a stable post-operative refraction. So the surgical steps. First, we create two MVR entries, 170 degree apart, and we fill the anterior chamber with a uh, cohesive OVD. Next, we introduce the Sinsky hook and we dial the IOL into the center, into the visual axis, and then we rotate the haptics into the sulcus or the haptics can be manually tucked in into the sulcus behind the iris. Then using a 23 gauge cutter, we do an anterior vitrectomy and a membranectomy also, which clears the visual axis and provides us with space for further manipulation. As we can see, we are clearing uh, the visual axis and we are providing space for further manipulation of the eye well. Now, finally, we uh, inject OVD and we push the optic posteriorly. So the inferior part of the optic, as you can see, the inferior part of the optic is then tucked in between the remnants of the capsule and the haptics remain in the sulcus. After this, we replace the OVD with, here we can see that the inferior part of the optic is tucked in between the haptic. And then we remove the OVD and replace it with a BSS solution and hydrate the wounds. So again, these are the summary, initial preparation, manipulating the IOL into position using a Sinsky hook, performing an anterior vitrectomy and a membranectomy, and then doing the inferior optic capture. Now the results. We performed this procedure on 11 patients over a period of one year, and most of the patients had a good post-operative -op outcome with less than two diopter cylinder of uh, post-operative refraction. Only two patients had a post-operative refraction of four and 4.5 diopter cylinder. One patient on follow-up had an IOL redislocation which occurred at around three weeks. And for that, the patient required a IOL exchange with a three-piece IOL. And the uh, stability of, the, uh, of this technique was confirmed by slit lamp and OST examinations which are done at three and six months of follow-up period. So as you can see on the slit lamp examination, even in the presence of a capsular defect, uh, the IOL is stable as it is positioned 
behind the inferior parts of the capsular remnant. So even in the presence of a capsular defect, we could still utilize the capsular rem remnants and provide stability to the pre-existing IOL. Again, we can see in the presence of, of a capsular defect, the IOL is still stable. And the same can be confirmed on OCT images in which the IOL is stable behind the inferior part of the uh, capsular remnants. In conclusion, this method has been prov has proven to be a reliable and effective option for stabilizing the single piece PMMA IOLs and it reduces the need for IOL explant and exchange, but additional research and extended follow up periods are needed to evaluate the long term efficacy and safety of this method. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tavish. And how long was your follow up duration in your study? Ma'am, we had a follow up at three months and six months for the patient. And what you have, a, if you get a patient with a gross capsular defect, where you have just the IOL maybe sinking into the anterior chamber, so yes. in those cases, what will you opt for? Ma'am, in those cases, for uh, hammock, you need at least the entire support, the one which you are yes, saying, basically a sulcus fixation. It's the IOL in the sulcus. So suppose yes, you don't have that support, so how will you go about with those cases? Yes, ma'am. If there is uh, a lot of caps, uh, a caps, if there's loss of capsular support, like suppose more than uh, three clock, more than four or five clock hours, then we cannot do this method. Then we'll opt for a scleral fixated IOL in those cases. Yes. In this, in which, uh, in the e even if the superior rim is not there, we can just use the inferior rim for the capture, and it will yeah. not uh, help. It will not lead to instability. That's why, because posterior. if for posterior capture we need like a superior rim also with the inferior rim. So in oh. this, we demonstrated that like the hammock, we can use just the inferior rim, and we can stabilize the IOL in the cell. Okay, but it's not just the superior or the inferior rim. Uh, everyone will agree that it's the <coughs> maximum support that you can find that will support your IOL. It's not necessary that you have only the inferior rim. Because yes, ma'am. you don't have the posterior support, you need a support, like you have mentioned, okay, hammock was a good option, but it's something which is known. So we need to come out of this, okay? We mm. need to find out something more innovative. But okay, good surgical videos and nice effort. Thank you.